So in this video, I want to share five masculine secrets that make you insanely attractive to women and transform you into the type of guy that girls naturally chase. My name is Bobby Rio and I've been coaching guys in their dating lives for over 13 years now. And the reason that I decided to create this specific video is to answer a couple things that I've been hearing. One is that there's a lot of guys that say, I'm not comfortable having to play games and why do I have to be somebody that I'm not or all of this seems like too much work. And if you fall into that category of, I don't wanna have to play games, this video is really gonna resonate with you because I'm gonna show you that it's not about being playing games or being someone you're not, it's about embracing the masculine qualities that women naturally find attractive. The second reason that I wanted to create this video is because I think there's a lot of misinformation or a lot of, especially coming from the media where they sort of derogatize this term being masculine. And I've noticed that a lot of guys that come to me for coaching, guys that I work with are almost scared nowadays to embrace this masculinity. They think that they're gonna get in trouble or it's not what women want. When in fact, as I'm gonna prove to you in this video, being masculine is exactly what women want. It's all about how you project this masculinity and also what your definition of masculinity is. For a long time, I used to think of masculinity as the, the tough guy, right? The tough alpha male guy who was getting into fights and you know throwing his weight around, you know, the kind of like a Tony Soprano type of guy. But what I've come to understand over the past several years is masculinity is not about any of that. It's about the five secrets that I'm gonna share in this video. And these five secrets, like I said, turn you into the type of guy that women are naturally attracted to. So I wanna get into each of them, go through them, and show you more importantly, how you can begin implementing them and demonstrating them in your own life. So the first masculine secret is emotional autonomy. Now, I often talk about this term autonomy, and autonomy means self-governing, independent, a man who's going somewhere, a man on his mission. And what I've noticed is that a lot of my clients instinctively pick up on this idea that, yeah, I've gotta have goals in life and I've gotta be focused on other areas of my life, but there's a type of autonomy that really is important when it comes to keeping a woman attracted to you and projecting that masculinity around her. And that is emotional autonomy, right? Emotional autonomy is, you wanna think of it almost as emotional control. Okay, how well are you able to control your emotions when you're with a woman? And how much can she take control of your emotions? This is something that you'll notice where a guy might say, I'm really, really, really focused. I have a lot of goals in my life and I'm really into my career. But then he meets a woman and things get a little rocky. He gets a little confused. He, he goes into emotional quicksand, right? And as, even though he says, hey, I'm, I'm totally autonomous and I've got things going on in my life, this woman not texting him back has taken emotional control, right? A woman who then maybe he's hanging out with her and she disagrees with somebody, something he says, and he gets noticeably upset, right? She's got emotional control over him. It could be something like a woman doing something and he feels jealousy and that jealousy takes over and he can't control himself. So being masculine is about this ability to have emotional control over yourself, especially when it comes to the women that we really, really like, because that's where that control tends to diminish, right? Every guy in the world can be totally in control of his emotions when he's hanging out with a girl that he doesn't really like. It's when we really start to feel for someone that all of the sudden, it's almost like we subconsciously hand that person control over our emotions. And this means if she doesn't text us back, our emotions kind of lead us to, oh no, and we're sitting there and we're staring at our phone and then we make the wrong decisions when we do talk to her and we wind up like going overboard trying to impress her because we're acting 
on emotion. Being masculine is simply separating how you feel about a woman. This is not like saying you can't be attracted to a woman, you can't have feelings for a woman, but it's about saying that what happens in this area of my life is simply boxed into this area and it's not going to affect this area of my life. Now, we have to do this in all areas of our life, right? There's some guys where they have no emotional control when it comes to their career. We've all met these guys where they had a bad day at work and then they're hanging out with us and they're like in a bad mood, they're moping, they're they're, you know, they're aggressive and they're 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 kind of snappy because they had a bad day at work, right? They were unable to separate the emotions they felt at work with this other area of their life. Well, you have to be that way with women. You have to understand that the feelings that she's putting inside you are you're in control of them, not her. And that is really what ma and masculinity is. And women actually want this, right? They don't want to have control over you. Now there's a few other ways that this plays out, right? It could be your self-esteem is dictated by what's going on in your relationship. So this means that if, if a woman turns you down or rejects you or chooses another guy over you, your self-esteem drops, right? She's got control over your self-esteem. This plays out in, in other ways, right? Fear is an emotion and a masculine man acts in spite of his fear. So a masculine guy may kind of feel a fear, right? We all, we all see the guy who walks over and starts a conversation with a random beautiful woman and we assume he doesn't have fear. The truth is he has that same butterflies, that same self-doubt, but he acts in spite of that fear and that's really what masculinity is. It's being able to control that emotion and act anyway. So let me give you another example of how this emotional autonomy plays out. So it's about emotions affecting your boundaries and not letting that happen. So if you have something in your life that's really important to you, a value that you hold, okay? A value could be something like, when I'm with somebody, I don't want them texting on the phone and being on their phone the whole time, okay? And that's a value you have. And then you're hanging out with a woman on a date and she's on her phone all the time, right? You can't let this feeling, right? This emotion, well, I really like this woman, affect your value. A masculine man is still gonna be assertive and say, hey, hey, let's hang out, put, put your phone away and let's, let's, let's talk, right? Come on, we're on a date, let's talk. Like, you don't have to be mean about it, you don't have to like scold her, but you assert your boundary in spite of the emotion of I like this woman. You're still going to assert that boundary. That's what emotional autonomy means. And when a woman meets a man who's emotionally autonomous, he's naturally a challenge to her, right? I said earlier that women chase these kinds of guys because they're naturally a challenge. So let's talk about the next aspect of secrets of masculinity. And this one in a way relates to that, right? And this is the idea of being non-reactive. Now, you may have heard this term before, but this means can a woman get a reaction out of you? And there's a reason that women do this. And if you study sort of the dynamics of masculinity and femininity, and you really, I, I kind of nerd out on topics and I really get into it and learning about it. The more you read about it, the more you kind of realize that women are in essence, this constant flow of emotions, right? In any given moment, their emotions are running wild. They're feeling all different things. They don't even realize that they're feeling them. So they're throwing comments out there. They're doing things that confuse us. And as a man, what a woman is really looking for is that sturdiness, okay? Masculinity is sturdiness. It's being the rock. And what happens to a lot of guys is when they're faced with this emotional energy from a woman, they react to it immediately. So a common example I give of reacting to a woman is when a woman gives you maybe unsolicited advice or feedback. So maybe a woman, you're talking to a woman and you tell her that you're an accountant and she goes, oh, every accountant I know is so boring right? Well, you're going to feel an emotion, right? In that moment. And if you react to that emotion, you're essentially feeding into that feminine energy, right? That feminine energy is the drama that we see on Housewives of Beverly Hills, right? It's it, feminine energy is essentially soap opera type drama. 
That's not masculine energy. We don't watch those type of things, right? Masculine energy is not that. And you want to respond with masculine energy. So if a woman says, you know, oh, accountants are so boring, be like, oh yeah, okay. And just smile at her, right? Just let it roll off you. That's what being non-reactive is. It's like, she's not going to suck you in to that emotional turbulence she's feeling. And she doesn't want to. It may appear like she wants to, but really she wants somebody who's gonna like be, ground her a little bit, right? Get her stable. This happens even in relationships. It's something that took me a long time to figure out with various uh, women that I'm dating and women that I'm with now, where it's like a woman may say, you don't do this or you don't do that. And our natural reaction is to go, yes, I do. I do this all the time. She, you know, she says, you never, you never tell me you love me. I tell you I love you all the time, right? What are you, you're crazy. What do you mean I don't tell you? I, like, that's reacting. Whereas being non-reactive is simply saying, come here, babe, you know I love you. Don't, you know, I, don't be silly, you know I love you. That's being like sturdy, right? That's actually what she wants. She wants sturdiness. She doesn't want the guy who, when she goes, you never help out, you never take the garbage out. What do you mean I don't take the garbage out, right? That's reacting. You need to, in that moment, go, babe, I will, Give me the garbage. I'm gonna take it out right now. Like, and just be like sturdy. That's what's attractive to women, that sturdiness. Whether it's a woman you're in a relationship with or it's a woman that you're on a first date with, it's like, be a rock, be sturdy. Don't let her see that you're able to swing emotionally one way or another, right? Even something like jealousy. We often, I think we talked about jealousy in, in the previous section where if a woman is like trying to make you jealous, it's like you don't want to react. We've seen guys who are like, Ugh, what are you doing? You're like, that's reacting. This doesn't mean you can't assert a boundary, like I said. You can quite simply say, hey, listen, I think the way that you're acting is kind of um, inappropriate. You know, I'm just letting you know that I, I feel like it's a little inappropriate. But getting all upset and storming out, like that's feeding into feminine energy. And that actually turns a woman off, right? She wants you to be that rock, that sturdiness, that balances her emotional turbulence. So let's get into the next one. All right, so number three is desire plus respect, okay? So I think this is a very important masculine secret that a lot of guys don't quite comprehend because when I deal with clients and I deal with men in general and I'm talking to people, they, there's, there's very rarely a balance of these two things, which confuses a lot of guys because we get mixed messages. Again, I, I mentioned the media earlier, which portrays like toxic masculinity and all these like Me Too and Harvey Weinstein type of guys. And the reason that this is happening is because these guys have desire, but they don't have respect, right? They don't respect women. They desire women and they act on that desire, but they don't have respect. On the other hand, I deal with a lot of clients who project a lot of respect for a woman. I was uh, working with a client recently and we were going over a situation with a woman that he's been dating and he's like been dating her for a month now. And I go, hey, so like, you know, are you guys sleeping together? And he's like, no, no, no. Like she's not that type of girl. And I, I feel like it's kind of too soon, right? And he respects her but he's not projecting desire for her. And masculinity is desire and respect, right? I often say, my, my friend Chris Anderson has a term, escalation is attractive, okay? Meaning that the man who goes after what he wants, who expresses his desire for a woman, that is naturally attractive to a woman, but you have to attach respect to it. This means that if, if you're saying to yourself, well, the date was going really well, I sensed a vibe, but if, if I ask her home at the end of the night and I say, hey, want, hey, you wanna come back to my place? That's expressing desire, right? That's good. Now a guy says, well, that's gonna make her think that I just want sex or that I, I don't respect her. But the fact is, is that if you're asking her back to your place, all you have to do is show respect. If she says it's too soon, you respect that. You're not like Harvey Weinstein in that video at the hotel where he's like, come on, come, just come in for a second. Come on, one second, please. If she says it's too soon, you say, oh, I totally respect that. I'll see you next time, right? Respect her boundaries. Women have boundaries. Project your desire. And if, you have, if she expresses a boundary, you simply respect that boundary. 
Women like that, right? Because it allows them to feel comfortable around you. You think that by never expressing desire that a woman is comfortable, but really she's uncomfortable because what you're really expressing is that sex is this huge deal for you, right? And now for her, it's like, oh my God, when I finally do go up to this guy's apartment, it's gonna be this huge deal, which is why right off the bat, you wanna always be expressing desire and respect. Desire is telling a woman, hey, you, you, know, you look really sexy. Respect is her, if you notice that she's uncomfortable with it, you just kind of, you don't, you don't keep with it, right? You always have to mix desire and respect. That's very masculine. Women want to be desired, but they also want to be respected. And if you combine those two, you're in the sweet spot. You're in the spot that she is naturally attracted to you. So before we get into the next one, I do want to tell you that I have a entire free training online called Three Steps to Power, Value, and Status. And this class really dives into this concept of what makes a powerful man, what makes a socially high value, high status man, because I think there's a misinformation regarding that, right? Just like masculinity, there's this idea that in order to be high status or high value to a woman, you have to have a lot of money or you're a lot of connections or you gotta be doing all kinds of like, you know, uh, trips to Ibiza and hanging out on yachts. And that has nothing to do with being high status. High status is all about the internal price that you put on yourself and how you project that to a woman. And what the class does is it shows you how to place value on yourself and then how to communicate that value and then how to build a reputation amongst all the people in your social life as being this high value, high status man. So there's a link to that class below, it's completely free. So let's get into the fourth masculine secret. And this one is the de-idolization of women, okay? The de-idolization of women. What does this mean? So this is a concept really that comes from psychology. And what it means is that throughout our, 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 our childhood and into our adolescence, humans are conditioned to idolize our parents, meaning we put our parents up on a bit of a pedestal. We don't really see them as real people. And because of that, we act differently around them than we do other people, right? We, when, 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 you're, when you're nine years old, you don't act the same way towards your parents as you do towards your friends or even other adults in your life because you have them, you don't necessarily see them as real people. You see them as somebody you constantly need to get approval from. You see, some, you see them as people that need to validate you. Well, what happens to a lot of guys and even a lot of women, but this video is, 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 is in, in terms of the men, is we replace our parents, that idolization that we have towards our parents. And when we hit our, you know, maybe high school or college age, we begin to then idolize women where that same approval seeking behavior that we see and experience with our parents begins to seep out with women. That same element of not necessarily being ourselves around our parents now is how we act around women where we're like a different, we've all seen, we've, we've, I, I've been that person and I can recognize that in my own group of friends where they're still, guys in their 30s or 40s or even 50s who when you hang out with them in a group of guys they're one you know person and then you put them around a woman and they totally become this like totally different person and it's like why are you changing who you are around these women right and that's because they have women in this idolization role it's maybe the pedestal we can call it and being masculine is about essentially taking women off this pedestal not idolizing them and seeing them as normal people. This is really important because one of the things that I really saw an improvement in my dating life was when I started working in the restaurant business uh, years ago as a, uh, first as a waiter and then as a bartender. And I was surrounded by waitresses that I worked with all day. And I began talking to them and spending a lot of time just hanging out and talking to them. And the biggest insight that this all gave me 
was that they're just people, right? They have insecurities, they have like problems in their life and they, they like have fears and there's guys that they like that aren't calling them back and there's like, they're, they have problems with their boss and they feel ugly and they feel fat and they like, they're just people. And when you begin to experience that and really understand that they're just people just like us and you talk to them like that, that is very masculine because it's like, oh, he just gets it. He's just a man. I'm just a woman. We're not different, right? I'm not, I'm not this like sublime creature that he has to impress. And that's uh, something that women want to see from you. This also plays out and this kind of goes back to that uh, last concept of desire and respect a woman. But it also means that like, women like sex, right? And a lot of times, uh, again, especially when it's like a good girl, like we have her as a good girl in our mind, we idolize her as this like sacred angelic woman who would never ever want to have sex, right? But really she's just a girl who enjoys having orgasms and you know, all that sort of stuff, just like every other woman in the world, just like we do, right? And a man, a mature masculine man understands that. Sex is not a big deal to him, right? So a masculine man, when he meets a woman, he doesn't attach excess meaning to sex. Sex is just what two people do. So when he hangs out with, a, when he hangs out with her and he's on a date with her and things are going well, he just assumes like, oh, of course she's gonna wanna have sex, right? Again, he respects her boundaries if she says no or if she's not interested or whatever. But he doesn't idolize her and say, she probably is gonna, she needs to wait two weeks or she needs to wait three weeks, right? That's idolization. That's what nice guys tend to do, right? And that's why nice guys are often seen as feminine because they, they have women up on this pedestal and they don't see them as real people, right? They idolize them. And women don't wanna be idolized, right? Because if you think about evolution, the masculine, right? If there's the masculine feminine polarity, the masculine has traditionally, evolutionary, been the, strength, right? And the femininity is sort of the, like, I don't want to say weakness, but it's the weaker energy, meaning the masculine is the stronger energy, feminine is the weaker energy. And you want to project that. You want to be the masculine because that is actually what makes men attractive to women, right? If we were just women and we just acted like women, they would not be attracted to us. It doesn't matter what you hear, what the media says, what small group of people on Twitter complain about. Like, in the real world, women still want masculine men, right? If you want, like, you, you can't get sucked in to what you're hearing because that's not what it's like in the real world. In the real world, women respond to a masculine man. So the fifth masculine secret that I wanna share is a simple one, and I'm not going to dwell on this one too much, but it's be in control. Okay. Masculinity is about control. It's not about controlling a woman. Let's be clear. I'm not saying you control a woman, but you control the situation. If you're with a woman, think of it as like, I'm going to control this. I'm going to make everything as comfortable for her as possible. Now, how do you do this? An example could simply be if you're out at a restaurant, and you know you need to get the waiter's attention, right? You have to take the control. You have to be the one to say, even if it's her that needs her drink refilled, and she's like, you know, hey, I need a new drink or whatever. You go, hey, hey, uh, can you get her a new drink? Like that's control. That's taking control. Taking control is if you're out at a place and the place is like really, really crowded and you're not sure like, does she like this place or does she not like this place? I, I don't really like this place. Control is saying, you know what, this place kind of sucks. I, I, know, I know a better place, let's go to it. Like what the nice guy does or what the guy who lacks this like leadership might go, hey, do you like this? Should we stay here or do you wanna go? Just take control be like, hey, I know a better place. This place is not good. Control is accepting that you are responsible for making things happen in every element of the interaction and the escalation, right? So control is going, all right, we've been hanging out. It's going well. She, she's obviously into me, I'm into her. So it's time to progress this a little bit. So that may be, hey, 
let's go get a drink and you grab her hand and you walk her through the restaurant or the bar and now you've established that next right? You've moved up that ladder of intimacy and you were the one who took control, took her hand and walked her there. Being in control is saying, Hey, we've been hanging out. Like I want to kiss her. I'm not going to like wait and get, have her go, Hey, kiss me already. I'm just going to take control and I'm going to kiss her. I'm going to respect her boundaries, right? But I'm going to go for the kiss. I'm in control. I'm controlling the environment. I'm not controlling her. I'm controlling myself and I'm controlling the environment to make this as pleasant of a interaction and experience for her as possible. Now, one thing I want to say there, right, is being in control and making this comfortable and pleasant for her does not mean kissing her ass and like, you know, this is, again, you're not idolizing her. It just means that the things that are a masculine responsibility of being the leader, being the decision maker, that's within your control and those are the things that you want to control. So let's review real fast the five masculine secrets that we just went over. The first is emotional autonomy and this essentially means that whatever your values are, your personal boundaries are, your goals are, you don't let the emotions a woman is making you feel change that. So if a woman is doing something that you don't like or you feel is disrespectful, but your emotions are, well, I really like this woman, and now you have fear, right? You're, you have fear of, well, if I, if I stand up to myself or if I disagree with her, she's not gonna like me anymore. You now have no longer experiencing emotional autonomy, and being masculine is about holding on to that emotional autonomy. The second one is being non-reactive. And this is essentially, we talked about the feminine masculine polarity and femininity is a very reactive, it's a very emotionally turbulent energy. And you don't wanna get sucked into that. So if you're with a woman and she makes a comment like, we're not gonna, I'm not going home with you tonight or I'm not gonna sleep with you, right? You just sort of say, of course not. And you keep talking to her. You don't get sucked in. You don't emotionally react to what she's saying. You just let it roll off you because you're the, the, the strong masculine energy. You don't get sucked into her feminine energy. The third is the idea of desire and respect. And we talked about how desire without respect is creepy. That's the guy who's the creepy guy. That's the Harvey Weinstein guy. On the other hand, the guy who projects that he respects a woman without desiring her is the guy, the nice guy, the guy who winds up in the friend zone. You want to combine desire and respect, and that is a masculine trait that women find very attractive. The next is the, the de-idolization of women, and we talked about how we went, a lot of guys go from idolizing their parents and seeking approval from their parents and uh, not seeing their parents as human beings to then putting that same idolization onto the women in their, their life that they like, where they now feel that they need women's approval and they don't treat women as people, they treat them as these like up on a pedestal and masculinity is about treating them like an equal, treating them like another human being. And then we talked about the idea of control and that concept is simply meaning that it's your responsibility to take control of an interaction if you sense that the date is not going well or this location that you chose is kind of boring to simply say, hey, I know a better place. Let's go there. At the end of the night, it's your responsibility to go for the kiss. You have to be in control of moving things forward. So all of this is about the masculine secrets. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I also have a class. This class goes deep into the idea of value, status and charisma because most guys associate these things, right? Status, value, all these things with like money or things like being out on a boat with private jets. But really what these things are about is your internal level of how much value you demand from people, right? Are you a, nat are you a man that puts a high price tag on himself so when people meet you, they see you as that high status guy. So what the, what, the, what the free class below does is it walks you through the three steps. The first step is how do I project that I'm a high value man? And we talk about 12 ways, 12 characteristics of that man that's naturally seen as high value. Then we talk about how to communicate it. So when you're talking to a woman, how do you communicate this value without sounding like you're trying to impress her, right? Because it, 
it's not at all about, in fact, trying to impress somebody lowers your value. Communicating your value is talking from a place of being high status, right? The way you talk to her, the way you communicate with her is from a place of status. The third part of the class is how to build a reputation throughout your social scene as that guy, that high status guy. And it's a lot easier than most guys think because as we mentioned, as I mentioned earlier in the class, it's all about perception. It's all about how people perceive you and you can control the way somebody perceives you. That's a really important distinction. You are in control of how you're perceived by other people and that's what this class digs into is how to control that perception so you're seen by the women in your life as having high value, as having high status and as being socially powerful. So I have a link to that class below. I also, if you like this video, hit like, subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment letting me know what you'd like me to cover in the next video.